Welcome to Not A New World. I actually recorded this uh, before, recorded building this, uh, but I didn't like the audio in that, so this is the second bite of the apple. And what this experiment seeks to do is build an oxygen not included style um, reservoir tank. As you can see with the gas kind of floating around everywhere, um, this was completed and then I depressurized it. And the pressure is still hanging around just a little bit. Um, I'll depressurize it again at the end of the video just for uh, the fun of it. But uh, let's speed through the construction because uh, that part of the video is fine. I just have to strip out the audio for that. which is how we got to this part. So it's a 3x3x3 three by three by three void on the inside. There is an intake and an uh, out... Ah. take, I guess you could say. An exhaust part. Um, and theoretically it can hold as much uh, atmosphere uh, as you would like to any pressure. Now I'm going to make a little change here because originally I had a back pressure valve, but I think the back pressure valve has a maximum um, throughput. So it's possible that putting a, um, a digital valve will allow it, will allow the gas to pass through um, much more quickly. And let's just find one. Uh, that's not how you spell digital. Actually, that, I'll just put valve. There it is. Get rid of this valve first. Okay. So, if I was going to replace this with a digital valve, I will need to change the automation just a tiny bit. There we go. Because I would need a sensor. Oops. That was not what I wanted to do. There it is. Get rid of you. I need to put a um, an analyzer on this side of the valve so that I'll be able to know what um, the pressure on this side is and be able to shut that valve off uh, before it overpressurizes. Um, the outgas side. Now, this is probably a bad idea, and I haven't done this before. Tested it. So it probably won't work. But, for the test that I have in the future, um, I would really like to have it available. Okay. Oh. Let's just rename this before I close it up. Because as soon as I close it up, I won't be able to see it, and it won't be on, and horrible things will happen. Hopefully I remember what those names are all about. 
and uh, we've gotten a good look at this, so I can close it up and we won't care in the future. And over here, we have a turbo pump and a sensor. And uh, that's it. These two, um, these two displays are connected to that sensor in there. That's all we need to know about that. Oop. Then over here, I have a very simple airlock. Now this is will allow us to go in and um, cheat, pressurize uh, this bay. But I think I want to do a few things first. So let's just get that done. By the way, I think I'm probably going to call this the porcupine or something. It's just basically a, a, a solar panel cube. And it goes into uh, one I.O. chip that writes to two um, memories. And then it outputs to two uh, batch writers. Now, if I rename all of the... Uh, solar panels, I could, I might be able to do it through the batch command on the chip, but I haven't learned enough of the, the MIPS language to do that. But that's basically all it is. It's just a bunch of uh, batteries with a bunch of solar panels. and um, It's better than using a cheaty RTG, because all of these can be uh, done in survival mode. But let's continue buttoning this up, and then we'll come back to you know talking about stuff. Okay, we're done doing that. And now I kind of want to go through here and um, we'll fill up with the with the ice balls, which is going to be a wild ride. I was going to set it up so I wouldn't uh, have any gas on the interior, but um, that's funner this way. Maybe maybe my character will die again. Which it did several times before. So now we magically have um, gravity. So we're enclosed. Um, all that'll ever be in here uh, is what we'll create. Uh, this switch is open so that um, uh, a digital valve in here I'll show you the digital valve. It's not uh, super difficult to open this up. So we have that. Di so then we have that digital valve here, which will um, allow that pipe network in here to communicate into this um, gas tank storage, and will allow it to. Um, oops. Oh, it just emptied. Ah, yeah, damn. Uh, it will it'll allow it to be over-pressurized to the same pressure as inside this, um, this gas tank, so it won't explode. Um, that is a volume pump, and that will pull everything in this room out and back into the gas tank network when we want to leave. And then uh, there's just two switches and a program over there. Okay, so... We'll put this back on so that everything will equalize and then we'll show you that there it's like four psi or 40 uh, uh, pascals okay then we will go back in here and we'll walk into the corner and then we will do some oops fun and stupid stuff It's called Oxalite. Okay, so we will stand in here and we'll throw Oxalite and we will see the pressure suddenly increase. Once it starts melting, if it ever starts melting. Oh, it's not melting, so let's let's fill this up first. Oh no, it's melting. <laughs> I thought we were going to be able to fill it right up and then have it melt later, but this is fun too. 
So let's just do this for the next, uh, well, probably 10 minutes for me and 30 seconds for you. Boy, my finger's getting tired. Keep having to click. Well, I died. So I'm going to have to reload from um, an earlier save uh, because I forgot to seal myself in once again. Be right back. And here we see the, uh, the wonderful mothership that uh, will probably be never be part of the game because they removed it. Oh, oh, this might be, oh, this might be a killer. So we'll just have to wait until um, that amount of ice melts. And then we'll be able to get some pills. Because for some reason, my robot uh, is repaired through pills. Because that makes a whole lot of sense. It, it doesn't make sense, but whatever. I should, I should keep some pills instead of just eating them all. There we go. So, the pressure we are at now is 4 millipascals, which is uh, not enough to, to breach that tank yet. So, um... We'll just keep going with our little experiment. Uh, oxy. And we'll probably die again because uh, I think I died like three or four times last time. But back to the back to the tornado. I just realized that I actually can't seal myself in. Uh, because if I do that, uh, that tank's going to explode. So... Just gonna have to keep going like this. So I died. Uh, probably from all of the uh, pieces hitting me in the head. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get back in there. Because as soon as I open that, it's gonna blow out. Now, I could remotely turn off that valve, which is probably what I should have designed uh, to begin with. I should have designed a, a second switch out here uh, to allow me to get back in, but I didn't think about that at the time. <sighs> so, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I think I'm probably going to reload and then um, uh, fix the airlock. Uh, so as the last of these melt here... There we go. So... Yeah, I was going to change this airlock. Um, but I think I realized that all I really need is to reset that switch because if that switch is is open in here then this box will equalize with the rest of the uh, the rest of the tank so I won't have to worry about that that tank right there blowing up so let's seal this up like that oops What's happening? Now, if I was if I was smarter, I would have put uh, I would have put that onto that network there, but that's not going to happen right now. But 
I guess it's equalized. Oh, it's increasing. Is it increasing? Nope, it's not increasing. So hopefully, that will allow me access if I die again. I died twice the last time, so... I can probably assume that I'm going to die twice this time. I'm not exactly sure what's killing me. It might be um, the pressure's going up too quickly. Or it could be that the little... Uh, uh, the little pieces of ore are hitting me. And it's... It's affecting my health, but who the hell knows. Let's keep going. Hopefully, um, I can get to 64 uh, quickly. Okay, so I'm a little bit concerned that perhaps there's a leak. But there isn't. I'm just at a point where the pressure is so high... It's, uh, it's difficult to get more, uh, more atmosphere in here. So, we're at 30, uh, megapaxel, pax, pascals. Um, and it doesn't seem to be adding too much more for each piece of, uh, oxalite I put in. So there's a lot of diminishing return. But you can see how much... I've already put in here. So, I think rather than sit here and uh, stab at the uh, spawn button for the next two hours, uh, we'll just continue on once these, once these melt. So, just to Go over the design a little. Oh, I make little I make little uh, motor sounds. I didn't know that. Okay, so uh, just to go over some of the design now. These pipes, all connected together, are considered um, one entity. So any of the atmosphere that is in here. Um, a single calculation is applied to it. Each one of these cells, or blocks, or whatever you want to call them, is also a separate entity. That's why at the beginning there was still atmosphere floating around, even though we were in space. Um, because one block pushes into another block, pushes into another block, um, and it uh, sort of has a back pressure, and it, uh, it remains... Um, it, it remains it, it remains pressurized for uh, a period of time. So with vents inside each of these blocks, it's able to push it's able to pull from each one individually or push into each one individually. Hopefully um, that will allow like better uh, filtration so there isn't like trace amounts floating around and stuff like that, but it'll also allow a much, much higher throughput because this block will be able to feed into the pipe and then this uh, block will too as well, and this block, and this block, and this block, and this block. So, the throughput of the single pipe will be as high um, as you can pull it out. And these will equalize well, um, uh, 18, uh, 27 times quicker. Okay, so now that we have all this, let's get back into our airlock. Okay. Oh, shit. The airlock was supposed to equalize and it didn't. It's, it's open. I don't know why it's not equalizing. Come on, let me through. There we go.
Yeah, I don't know why it didn't equalize. Equalize now. But uh, we have to recreate. We have to put that back on there. So. There we go. That's back on there. And we will see that this uh, canister has 30 um, megapascals of um, gas in it. But it has not exploded. So, you can now pass through here and put your uh, repellent tank in there without it exploding and then be able to pick it up on the way out. And with a little bit of automation, you can pressurize that a little bit more than ambient. And then um, when you're uh, leaving, you can leave a little more than ambient uh, in there. And uh, everything will be perfect. Now, this, I don't remember how that's connected. That's, that's a shame. But you can see how much, um, how much oxalite I put in there. It was an enormous amount. You would not be able to store that much oxalite in the same number of squares of, uh, uh, of gas tank. Now it's, it's, uh, it's venting, and we're going to stop this at four megapascals, or just under four megapascals. Right about there. So that that will have a chance to pressurize. We'll pull that out, and then we'll continue depressurizing. Might be nice to have like a uh, a gate a gauge or something here. I don't like these um, electrical cables expo ex ex exposed because if there's any hydrogen in this in this tank, um, it will auto ignite when exposed to um, uh, electrical cable. Even at 1%. I'm assuming that this hydrogen, they call it volatile, so it's got to be hydrogen or some form of hydrogen. And then, you see the propellant is very close to being overpressurized here, but not quite. I might have might have been safer if I did a at a little lower. But here we go. Bring that back and we'll close that off. We'll let it equalize. There. And that's the that's the storage tank which now has uh, 34 um, megapascals of oxygen and nitrogen. Um, it's a whole lot more than that because it's, it's that times each square, so 9 by 9 by 9. Uh, times the amount of lengths of pipe that you have in there. Now, um, I could depressurize this to show you, but um, I have another experiment that I want to do in a moment. But let's just let's just show you once again that we can go in and out. See the propellant is is. Uh, almost overpressurized. Oops. One. We'll seal ourselves in. We're sealed in. Put that back in there. And equalize the pressure. We'll wait it to come up to whatever it, uh, the pressure is on the other side of the of the door.
which is like 30 something. The closer you get to the uh, to the equalization, the slower it'll go. Well, that's probably pretty close. We will open the door. It will blow us a little bit. That's pretty equal. Open that up. And again, this propellant would work perfectly fine. Actually, it should it should actually work. No, it has to be over the uh, the pressure. But there you go. Now we're back inside. We can make any repairs we want. Say if there was a repair that needed to be done in this wall. So this wall is adjacent to um, vacuum. Just put a patch over top of it on the outside. Get in here. And then we can take this, um, this panel off and work on whatever we need. And then we can close the panel back up, exit, and uh, get rid of the, uh, the patch. Now, I really do think that the damage that I'm... That I'm uh, getting has to do with uh, being hit by the pressure. Um, if I raised and lowered the pressure much more slowly, it may not kill me. Now, I haven't tested this with the, um, the human avatars yet, but it is possible that the human avatars may be able to survive the process as well. And we'll just... Close that, and open that back up. I would really like to get it up to, to 65, 64 uh, megapascals, just to show you that um, everything is working fine. Oh, I forgot to remove the propellant. <laughs> well, see, that proves that it works. <laughs> the propellant just blew up. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the design. And uh, that's the tank. Um, I'm not going to reload to show you anymore because you've basically seen everything that this, uh, that this has to offer uh, in this form. And I'll have another test later. See you next time.